Kohelet is the book that we read on Sukkot. And in the most famous chapter of Kohelet, chapter 3, a time for this and a time for that, we read, Eit lishmor eight lashlich. There's a time for gathering things, and there's a time for discarding things. I think that most of us, as we grow older, realize that we haven't sufficiently appreciated how much we need to discard. Anybody who has ever had the melancholy and bittersweet task of cleaning out someone else's house and possessions knows that most people don't discard nearly enough. They can't seem to let go of it, and yet, sooner or later, everything gets discarded. So in a half-hearted attempt to begin the process of discarding, which is a process that can take years, I started to go through some papers that I realized I had put in a file but really didn't need anymore. And in the course of it, I found a sermon that I had kept for over 20 years from a Rabbi Herschel Leibowitz, who was a rabbi apparently in Baltimore many, many years ago. And it was called Shmini Atzeret, The Empty Chair. And when I read it, I realized why I kept it. He begins by talking about the fact that in the story of Jonathan and David, when Saul, who first welcomes David and then becomes paranoid and is scared and tries to kill David, Jonathan warns David and tells him not to come to the dinner, and he says, I will miss you and your chair will be empty. And then Rabbi Leibowitz goes on to think about other empty chairs. He talks about the well-known incident in English literature of Dickens' great unfinished novel, Edwin Drood. That Nick Dickens had hired a young man named Joshua Fildes to illustrate the novel for him. And what happened was that Fildes came upon Dickens and discovered that the writer had passed away, and there he saw Dickens' empty chair. And he drew a picture of Dickens' empty chair that became very popular in England. People used to have it on their walls all the time, representing the absence of the author, and that that, paint, that picture became so famous in part because Close to 20 years later, Van Gogh saw it and drew his painting of the empty chair inspired by the Dickens painting. And then Leibowitz goes on to mention one more empty chair, which some of you perhaps have seen. You know, there's one Hasidic sect, the Bratzlaber sect, that when the Rebbe died, Nachman of Bratzlav, and this, in fact, may be what happens to Chabad, it remains to be seen, but when the Bratzlav Rebbe died, he told them, you will have no other rabbi. And in fact, the Bratzlav Hasidim still consider Rebbe Nachman of Bratzlav their only Rebbe. His chair which was in the Ukraine, was dismantled piece by piece and smuggled out of Russia, and now exists in the Bratzlav Shul in Israel, and no one is permitted to sit in the Rebbe's chair. And this chain of empty chairs is such a powerful symbol because on Yizker, we can all identify with this. When you walk into the sukkah, 
there's somebody who should be sitting in that chair who isn't there. I know each year on high holidays, before the pandemic, I would see empty spaces in the congregation and remember who used to sit in that chair. All of us in our lives have empty chairs. And that realization is not only powerful in terms of the people we miss, but in terms of our own future. One day we too will be absent from the chair that we have occupied. So I realized that I saved this sermon because it spoke to me, and I think I probably saved it before it even spoke to me as somebody who recited Yisker. But now I understand it more deeply, and I am glad that I didn't discard it. Because all of us in our lives have empty chairs and we remember who sat there, what he or she was like, what they taught, how we loved them. And now they're gone. But we remember. And as we look at the chair in which they once sat, we conjure up all the blessings they brought into our lives. And we hope that just as the physical manifestation, the chair still exists, so does their memory for us and for those who come after us. You know, when the rabbis talk about what it means to honor your parents, one of the things they say is you don't sit in your parents' chair. And then when a parent dies, you do. Because we take the place in this world of those who no longer occupy those spaces and we teach their lessons and we carry on. The Yisker service begins on page 330 with Adonai Ma'adam, page 330.